Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on the heart. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss uh, the effect of endothelin, specifically endothelin 1, on the heart. Okay, so this is going to be on endothelin 1 and its effects on the heart. Now, endothelins are amongst uh, the uh, most powerful powerfully inotropic uh, substances known to man. They have an incredible ability to induce uh, a more powerful contraction in the cardiomyocytes. So endothelin 1 and the heart. And we want to explore the mechanism behind this uh, positive inotropic effect of the endothelins. Right, and specifically we're going to look at endothelin 1. Right, so Let's say we have our cardiomyocyte here. So here's our cardiomyocyte, our bog-standard cardiomyocyte. So we've drawn this as a nice square box. Right, so what receptors does our cardiomyocyte have on its surface for endothelins? Well, for, specifically for endothelin 1. Well, basically, there are four types of receptors for endothelins that are known. Okay, so four types of endothelin receptor. Okay, right. And these are the type A endothelin receptor, the type B endothelin receptor, of which there are actually two types, uh, the B1 receptor and the B2 receptor, and the type C endothelin receptor. So these are called endothelin, so ET is short for endothelin, and then A for the endothelin type A receptor. Then endothelin B1 means uh, the endothelin receptor B1. And then we have the endothelin receptor um, B2. Okay, and then finally the endothelin receptor type C. Now, on the heart, you have endothelin receptors of the type A endothelin receptors of the type B1, and endothelin receptors of the type B2. Endothelin receptors of the type C are very, very um, niche receptors. They're not, their physiological function isn't really understood. Okay, so uh, these are the main three. Right, and all three of them are G-protein coupled receptors. So they are seven transmembrane receptors, so let's draw them here. They have seven membrane-spanning alpha helices, and they are coupled to G-proteins. And all three of these are actually coupled to the same type of G-protein, which is the heterotrimeric GQ G-protein. So, we can discuss these receptors all together, basically. So we will write ET for endothelin, receptor, and then we'll put A slash B underneath there to denote that we are talking about either the endothelin receptor type A or the endothelin receptor um, type B1 or the endothelin receptor type B2. So just by putting that, I'm denoting any one of the three, basically. Okay, and these are receptors for, specifically, we're looking at endothelin 1, which will denote ET1. So endothelin 1 will denote ET1. And endothelin type, oh, well, endothelin 1, and, and in fact all endothelins, are actually little polypeptides of around, I think, 21 amino acids. Okay, so they're just little polypeptides, basically. So endothelin 1 is going to come and bind to its endothelin receptor, which is either of the type A, uh, or the type B1, or the type B2. Now, I think now would be a good place to put in a little bit of added extra that isn't really relevant to its discussion on the heart, but is a nice little bit of pharmacology. So we have some drugs which are antagonists for the endothelin receptors, okay? Which means that they are drugs which bind to the endothelin receptor. So if I draw the endothelin receptor here, here's our endothelin receptor. They will bind to the endothelin receptor at the ligand binding site. So here comes our antagonist. It will bind to the receptor 
at the same site that the ligand binds the receptor. So at the same site where the endothelin 1 would want to bind, the antagonist will bind, and the effect that it will have is absolutely none. It will have no effect on the receptor. However, it will stop the endothelin 1 from being able to bind to the receptor. So effectively, it's just a competitor for the site of binding, and it itself has no effect on the receptor. So it stops the endothelin 1 from being able to interact with the receptor by binding to the site where it would want to bind. Okay, and we have, recept uh, sorry, we have antagonists for the endothelin receptors, which will bind to the site which endothelin wants to bind to, and therefore stop endothelin from being able to bind there. Okay, so let me give you their names. So, the first one I'm going to tell you about is a drug known as Bozentan. Okay, so Bozentan. Now, Bozentan is a non-selective endothelin receptor antagonist, and will bind to and competitively block the binding site for endothelin on all three of these types of receptors that I've circled in pink. As I say, the endothelin uh, type C receptor is just niche. These are the main ones. So Bozentam will bind to all three of these receptors, the type A's and the type, well, the type A and the type B's, okay, and block the endothelin from being able to bind to them, okay. Now, the two other drugs are selective uh, endothelin receptor antagonists, and they're selective for the A, type A endothelin receptor. Okay, so these other two drugs are known as cetaxentan. Cetaxentan. Okay, so let me write this nice and clearly. Cetaxentan. Okay, and the final one is ambricentan. Ambricentan. Okay. Right, so those are just a few drugs which are competitive antagonists for these endothelin receptors. So that's just a nice bit of pharmacology. Now, so they will block the effect of endothelin 1 on the cardiomyocytes. They're actually used uh, for different things other than their effects on the heart. They are used to block the endothelin receptors elsewhere rather than specifically on the heart. Okay, right, so... Uh, Endothelin 1, then. It's going to bind to the endothelin receptor of the A or B type. And then what? Well, this endothelin receptor is coupled to a G protein. Okay, so let's have a look at this down here. So let's draw our endothelin receptor here, this 7 transmembrane receptor, or this G protein coupled receptor. So this is the endothelin receptor of the type A or the type B. Okay, and it's a G protein coupled receptor, so it is equal to a G protein coupled receptor, a GPCR, which means that it's coupled to a heterotrimeric G protein. Now, heterotrimeric G proteins consist of three subunits. So let's draw them out here. Okay, so they consist of an alpha subunit, which I'll have as this one here, a beta subunit in the middle, and a gamma subunit over here. Right, now, when you are building heterotrimeric G proteins, which this is, this is a heterotrimeric G protein. And it's called a heterotrimeric G protein because it's made up of three subunits, three separate subunits, which are all different. So this is a heterotrimeric G protein. Okay, and when you're building a heterotrimeric G protein, there is an awful lot of scope for variation. Because in the human genome, there are 16 different alpha subunits you can use in this slot for the alpha subunit. There are five different beta subunits that you can use in this slot for the beta subunit. And there are 12 different gamma subunits that you can use in this slot for the gamma subunit. So there is a lot of variation. There's a lot of scope for making a lot of very different heterotrimeric G proteins. Okay, now uh, the name of the G protein is named after which alpha subunit you use. So, all of these endothelin receptors, these endothelin receptors of the type A, of the type, either of the B types here, they are all coupled to GQ heterotrimeric G proteins, okay? So, let me circle this in here. So, this is the box uh, surrounding our whole heterotrimeric G protein, just add a bit of colour on here. 
Okay, and now we'll circle the alpha subunit. So, the name of the heterotrimeric G protein, i.e. that this is a GQ heterotrimeric G protein, that is decided upon by what alpha subunit you use. So if you are a GQ heterotrimeric G protein, what it means is that the alpha subunit that you chose out of all the 16 that you had to choose from, you chose the alpha Q subunit, okay? Right, now, uh, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.